do companies determine what attributes help sell their products? Often the answer is to use conjoint analysis, which is a great application of multiple regression. For example, Procter & Gamble sells soap. What is the main attribute that drives the sales of soap? Well, it turns out to be the smell of the soap. For me, I don't really care. I just grab whatever soap's at eye level. But most people care about the smell of soap. So how do you figure out what people really want in a product? Well, you can't just ask them what attribute's important. You sort of have to tease the attribute worth out of them. And that's the point of conjoint analysis. OK, so we need some uh, nomenclature before we go on. So we might have a product, which might be a new blood pressure drug. And then that product might have attributes. And in the drug business, which you usually have, price is always an attribute, pretty much. And then besides price, you might have efficacy. How effective is the drug? So maybe it reduces blood pressure 5 points, 10 points, or 15 points. And then there's always the side effects. I mean, you can sort of make a drug do whatever you want, I think, if you don't worry about the side effects, particularly cancer. Too much chemo can unfortunately kill you. Okay, so the side effects might be, uh, we'll say vomiting. It might be 5% vomiting, 10% vomiting, 15% vomiting. And the trick is to trade this stuff off. And it also might be the brand is an attribute. Okay, what, what company the product comes from. And we always wonder, for instance, this is very important for the P&G, Procter & Gamble selling versus the CVS, for instance, generics. What is the attribute of the, uh, what is the value of the brand? I think in toothpaste, the brand is worth more, the P&G brand versus the CVS brand, than it is in aspirin. I think more people would buy a CVS aspirin versus a uh, bare aspirin than would buy a CVS toothpaste versus a Presto Colgate toothpaste. And so we'll see how Conjoint can help us out with this stuff. So then when we have the product attributes, we have levels. Okay. So basically, the attributes are price, efficacy, and basically the side effect. And these are the levels of the products. And the price might be low, medium, or high. And how can we use regression to sort of tease out what a consumer believes about the importance of these attributes and rank the levels in each attribute. Here it's obvious 5% vomiting is better than 15% vomiting, but often it's not obvious which levels of attributes are most important. So we'll take a classic example from the best-selling marketing book, I believe, by Philip Kotler. He has many marketing books. And it's on carpet cleaning fluid, which may not be the sexiest product, but it makes the point pretty well. So basically, what are the attributes in the carpet cleaning fluid? The package design, A, B, or C. And does it matter? Well, it might matter if you have a 90-year-old buying a carpet cleaning fluid. They don't want a cap that's hard to take off. But if you've got uh, twins in your house who are one-year-old, you want the cap to be tough to take off. You want a childproof. So it actually matters who the customer is. And you can segment customers using conjoint, although I don't think we'll get that far. Then let's suppose there are three brands of carpet cleaning fluid, one, two, and three. And let's suppose the price would range between $1.19 and $1.59. So we'll just have three price levels, the lowest price of $1.19, the highest price level of $1.59, intermediate price level of $1.39. Those are the levels of the attributes. Then there used to be something called good housekeeping approval, which has sort of become obsolete with Yelp and Amazon and recommendations. But that was a magazine where it gave the seal of approval. It was pretty important to sales. So you could either have good housekeeping approval or not. And you could either guarantee the product or not. So you could say, for instance, the product is guaranteed. You can take it back anytime you want and get a full refund. L.L. Bean, I believe, has this with anything you order. One guy walked into an L.L. Bean store 20 years later, and he bought a pair of shoes. And he went to the store and said, these shoes wore out. Can I have a new pair? They gladly gave him a new pair. OK. So this is basically the information we have on what's called product profiles. The design, the brand, the price, was it approved or guaranteed? Now, how many product profiles are there in our example? Well, there are three designs, three brands, three prices. There's an approval or not, a guarantee or not. There are 108 product profiles. Now, the idea behind Conjoin is you ask the consumer to compare product profiles. You can't really show a person 108 product combinations and ask 
the person to compare them. So I think marketing experts think you can compare up to 10 or 20. I don't think I can compare more than 10. But in this example, they picked 18 different product profiles, rows 2 through 19. Okay? And so this is the first product profile, the second product profile, et cetera. And then they asked the consumer to rank those product profiles, where a 1 is the product profile they liked the best, which was design C, brand 3, $1.19 price, approval, and a guarantee. The product they liked the worst was the highest price, had an approval, no guarantee. It was brand one, and it was design A. Okay, now, you can't just randomly pick out these product profiles. You want them to sort of be the levels of the attributes to be uncorrelated. So, for example, if I look at the price being $1.39 versus good housekeeping approval, I could, uh, well, first we need to code the data, and then we'll talk about the correlations. Okay, so we talked about indicator or dummy variables in regression. So we're going to run a regression to predict the rank of the product. That'll be the dependent variable. Now, basically, how do we get the dependent variable? We don't want to say one is the best because that's a low number. We don't want to say the lowest number is uh, in a regression is the best because then we'll get negative coefficients for what people like. But when people rank things, they want to say one is the best. So we flip this, okay? So basically, we want to make the one in 18. So that's what I've done in column J here. So in other words, where there's a 1, we make it an 18. Where there's an 18, we make it a 1. Essentially, that's 19 minus whatever the ranks were. Okay, So that's what we're going to try and predict. Now, how do we tell the computer what the design is, what the brand is, what the price is, what the approval is, and whether it's guaranteed? Well, remember, you have to leave out one value of a categorical variable when you model things in regression. So I arbitrarily left out design C. So I have a 1 here if it's design A, 0 otherwise, a 1 in this column it's design B, and how does the computer know it's design C? Well, basically, if there's a 0 in the A and the B column, it means it's not A and not B, and it's C. Okay. Then for brand, I left out brand 3. So we have a 1 with an if statement. Whenever it's brand 1, see the, the second data uh, product profile is not brand 1, et cetera. Now, this is brand two, so we have a one there. How do we know it's brand three? Like the third product profile is brand three, so we see it's not brand one, it's not brand two. We arbitrarily left out $1.59, and then we have a $1.19 column. The first product profile is $1.19, the second product profile is $1.39, and the third product profile is not $1.19, not $1.39, so it's $1.59. Then we have a one whenever it's a good housekeeping approval, and a zero when it's not. A 1 when it's a guarantee, 0 when it's not. So, for example, the product profile here, which is the second one, we can see that's design A, brand 2, $1.39, no approval and no guarantee. Now, the third product profile would be design A, it would be brand 3, it wouldn't be $1.19, $1.39, it would be $1.59, has an approval and no guarantee. And then here's the inverse ranks. So what we're going to do in our next video is run a regression using this information that defines the products to predict the inverse rank. And from that regression, we'll get information on the relative importance to this person of the product attributes. And within each attribute, how do the levels rank? And that's really the key thing we need to know. And then we can do value-based pricing. But you don't want to price cost plus. That's what a lot of companies do, but that ignores the customer. But like value-based pricing would say, how much can you charge for a satellite radio and a, and a new car? And we'll do an example of that. If we add a guarantee to a product selling for $1.39, basically what's the value-based pricing that we, what's the price we can charge for that adding something the customer wants? Can we add a 10 cents to the price, a nickel to the price? We'll answer that question and a couple of videos. But I want to show something about these product profiles. They're what's called an orthogonal design. So like if you look at the approval and the guarantee, they have a zero correlation. So if you remember the Corel function, we can correlate the uh, approval column with the guarantee column. And we see there's a e to the minus 17th is zero. 0.16 zeros, so that would be guarantee and approval, and that's what's called an orthogonal design. Why do you want low correlations between these columns here? 
Well, suppose every time you had an approval, you had a guarantee, and the correlation between the two columns was then you couldn't determine if the person bought because the product had a good housekeeping approval or had a guarantee. So in the next video, we'll run a regression and analyze that regression to really try and understand, given the customer's ranking of products here, and everybody could be different, what attributes really matter and rank the levels within each attribute. Okay, so thanks for watching, and, and there's a free course, a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, and all of these videos are coming from one of three books. So first, this one, which you can see here at the top of the screen, um, Microsoft's book, which has 355 reviews, uh, and then it's, let's see, 4.6 stars. Um, it's coming from this book as well, his marketing analytics book, which is down here, and you can sort of see 4.5, or his newest book, his analytics stories book which is here, and with that one, you can see it's four point something, or maybe even five. I don't think it's five. Yeah, 4.8. And so, yeah, anyways, in the description, there's a free 21-day course from Dr. Winston, um, or you can go to excelwithwayne.com slash free, and it'll be there. But again, thanks for watching, and if you have any questions, just uh, please let us know. Thanks.